Shalom, I'm Yeshua. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rechah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing to the Ophelakim that's preached the word in all truth and sincerity. Alone should is like foreigner brothers that are like the heathens. But the lion and fell side goes back to the nation of Israel, which the nation of Israel are you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans through the prophecies and curses of Deuteronomy 28 chapter and throughout the Bible? So, this is Brother Yakal Amaf by the lesson, and um, today's lesson will be entitled The Lord Preserveth the Faithful. I'm just going to go on some precepts and go into account, and the uh, Lord willing, you brothers and you sisters out there. Be edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shmuel Shai, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, Yahweh by Shmuel Shai is going to deliver his elect, you know, and all those, and all the two thirds of our people, the wicked Israelites and the heathen nations, you know, they're going to be caught up in the plagues and Jacob's trouble, you know, but the Lord is going to preserve, you know, his faithful men, the elect. You know, and uh, I just wanted to go into a, a lesson in regards of that. And uh, Lord willing, you brothers and you sisters out there, be edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shimon Shai, if I didn't say it already. And um, I'm going to start with the book of Psalms, chapter 31, and verse 23. And it reads, O oh, love the Lord Yahweh, all you saints. Right. You know, and the saints are the Israelites, you know, beginning on with the elect. You know, because we're supposed to love Yahweh by Shimon Shai with all our heart, man. You know, because it actually says that in the law. Leave us on uh, Deuteronomy 6. I'm trying to find it real quick. Uh, yep. Uh, Deuteronomy 6. This is uh, Deuteronomy 6 in verse 4, and it reads. Hear, O Israel, the Lord Yahweh our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love Yahweh thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. See, so that's the commandment that we were supposed to follow in the beginning, was to uh, love Yahweh by Shimon Shai with all our heart, our soul, and our might. You know? And the way we love the Lord is by keeping the commandments. You know? Because love is an action word. It's a deed. You know, so let's go back in Psalms 31 23. It says, Oh, love the Lord Yahweh, all you saints, for the Lord Yahweh preserveth the faithful, right? You know, which the faithful ones are the elect, you know, and let's just define our word preserveth. It's uh, from the Hebrew word natazar, uh, not natazar, not which means uh, to guard, watch, watch over, keep, right? Uh, guard from dangers, you know, because if you're being guarded from dangers, if you have that hedge protection, you know, that means, you know, you are being preserved, you know, it says to keep, observe, guard with fidelity, you know, be blockaded, you know, so that's what we want to be, you know, we want to have, you know, we want to be preserved from the said perils. As it says in Second Edges 9, which I'm going to go into that. Uh, it says, and plentiful. It says, for the Lord Yahweh preserveth the faithful and plentiful reward of the proud doer. Right. You know, the proud, because the Lord hates pride, man. You know, and the Lord said, you know, uh, you know, you shall, uh, the scriptures also say, uh, uh, render a reward to the proud. And now the war is going to be destruction, man. You know? It says, Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord your hollow. Right, man? So we got to be of good courage. We have to, and the Lord's going to strengthen our mind. You know? All we have to do is just put him first. And the Lord's going to take care of everything. You know, as the scriptures say, Cast uh, your birds upon the Lord, and he shall sustain me. You see? But uh, let's go to St. Edges 9 and verse 7. It says, And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith. And right, 
you know, the works are the works in Yahweh Shai. You know, teaching the word, believing, you know, being a good brother, you know, uh, having a good name, you know, having good works, you know, because the scriptures say, make full proof of thy ministry. You know, so, you know, how we make full proof of our ministry is we will upload our videos to YouTube so the whole world can see. And also going out on the highways and byways, uh, week in, week out, and teaching the word, man. You know, and we film it, and we uh, upload it on YouTube, you know, to, to show proof of our works. You see? Because by us having those works, we are uh, it's justifying our faith because, you know, uh, faith without works is dead. You see? It says, and by faith whereby you have believed, you see? Because only the elect is going to believe, man. You know, they won't have that faith. You know, it says, shall I be preserved from the said perils. And right in perils, when you look it up, it means serious and immediate danger. You know, which is Jake, which are the plagues of Jacob's trouble. So the elect, for the most part, are going to be delivered. Because it is written also um, in Revelation 24 that some of the elect is going to be beheaded. You know, not taking the MLTB, you know, but for the most part, the elect and Jacob's trouble, they're going to be preserved and they're going to be delivered. You know, they're going to have that hedge of protection, as it says in Psalms 34 and 7. The angel of the Lord Yahweh encamped around about them that fear him and delivered them. So that's that hedge of protection, you know, and there's been many accounts in the scriptures of our forefathers being hedged from, from Yahweh by Shimon Shad in times of, uh, in times of danger. You know, one example I'm going to is uh, uh, Elijah. You know, it was a famine during that time, and the Lord preserved Elijah for him to eat and drink. You know, so the same thing is going to happen with the elect in the times of Jacob's trouble, because the Lord said, "My servant shall eat and drink." You see, but uh, let's finish off in um, Second Edges nine and verse uh, verse eight. It says, "Shall I be preserved from the said perils." And shall see my salvation and my land. See the elect. They're going to be preserved all the way through. They're going to make it all the way through Jacob's trouble. They're going to endure. You know, and they're going to see the salvation. When not our Lord Yahweh Shai comes back. It says, and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Right? And sanctify means to cleanse, set apart. You know, because the elect are, are holy. You know, are separate. Because it's in the elect within the elect. The whole nation of Israel is the elect as a whole, but within that, but within the nation of Israel, there's there's an elect, which is 144,000 holy apostles and prophets. You know, so the Lord has set apart His elect from all the other uh, from all the uh, other wicked Israelites. That's not going to repent. You know, only the 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 the, the sanctified ones will repent and be saved. Which are the elect? It says. For I have sanctified them from for me from the beginning, you know, because before the foundation of the world, before the Lord created the whole world, he already chose his elected spirits, you know, begin on with Yahweh Shai. So there's already, you know, set in stone for the elect to be uh, delivered, you know. It says, then shall it be in pitiful case, which have which not have abused my ways and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments and that applies to the to, to the two thirds. You know, even you know two thirds amongst Israel, I know that the Israelites that's willfully, you know, uh leading the sheep astray, you know, pushing false doctrine, you know, um willfully, you know, um, you know, not teaching the truth, the full truth, man, for filthy lucre's sake. So they are the ones that abuse the Lord's ways too. You know. So they're gonna be they're gonna dwell in torments, man. You know, because remember the Lord said, you know, he's gonna start uh judging shall begin at the house of the most high. So the house of the most high the Israelites, so judgment is gonna be begin with us, you know, because we are here way more accountable uh than Jake in the world I don't know the truth, you know. So because we know the Lord's will, you see. So let's go into that account real quick. And uh, I'm not gonna read the whole chapter, but you know, just gonna read a couple of precepts. But uh, Elijah predicts drought. You know, which Elijah he was a uh, a great prophet of Yahweh by Shimon Shai, man. 
you know, and this was the time of uh, kings during the time of uh, the reign of uh, the wicked king of Israel, King Ahab, and his wicked wife, uh, Jezebel, you know. And it reads, uh, 1 Kings 17 to 1, says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, As Yahweh God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. So it was going to, it was going to be a famine. You know, because remember the water, which is, you know, the uh, the rain and the dew, you know, that's what waters out, uh, that's what waters the crops to make the crops grow so you can have, you know, food and stuff, you know, your grains. So it was, it's going to be a famine. And um, it was a famine of, it was a famine of food for three, uh, three and a half years. And just, uh, let's just, uh, just want to prove that real quick. Yeah, I wish I had uh, reference this account. Let's see, cross references. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Luke four twenty five. That's that's the scripture right there. Uh, this and this is Yahweh Shai speaking. And it reads, uh, "But I tell you of the truth, many widow, widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, which is uh, Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months. So for three and a half years, it was a famine, when great famine was throughout all the land." But unto none of them was Elias sent, save, which means except, unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, to a woman that was a widow. You know, so, yeah, so Yahweh Shai is referencing this account in 1 Kings 17, which we're going to go into. Uh, verse 2, it says, And the word of Yahweh came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cheref, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So, you know, this is a miracle. The Lord, you know, commanding the ravens to feed Elijah. You know, and that's not far-fetched because if you look at the nature of a raven, they have, uh, uh, they're very smart. They're very intelligent. You know, they have uh, great troubleshooting skills. They can solve problems and stuff, and they, they're very, very uh, wise uh, birds. You know, it says, so he went and did according to the word of the Lord Yahweh, for he went and dwelt by the brook Jareth, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. So this is the, this is an example of the Lord preserving the faithful. You know, the faithful in this account was Elijah, because he did the will of the Lord, he did the work of the Lord. And when all hell broke loose, broke loose uh, the Lord was uh, dealing with Elijah. He was looking out for him, you know, commanding uh, ravens to eat him, to feed him with bread and flesh in the evening and the morning. So that was a miracle, man. And that proves the Lord controls the animals, you know. It says, um, so yeah, that was that was it, you know. Um, like I said, I wasn't going to read the whole account. I just wanted to get those few verses to prove that the Lord preserved the right, uh, the right, the faithful. You know, Elijah, he was a faithful man of the Lord, and, and the Lord preserved them in a time of famine by having them eat and drink still while the whole world wasn't, you know, and the elect, they, they're going to be well taken care of, man, you know, in, in, in these times today. We don't know how the Lord going to do it, but, you know, the Lord is a man of his word, and he, he said he was going to have his, as it says, uh, Isaiah. 65 in verse 13 therefore thus have ye how about shemal shah behold my servant shall eat and the lord's servants are his are the prophets it says but ye shall be hungry right so the elect you know they're gonna be they're gonna be eating but the but the eat I, sh I shall be hungry that's gonna be the wicked israelites the two-thirds and these heathens you know behold my servant shall drink but ye shall be thirsty so you know the servant of the lord they're gonna have food and drink, you know. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. So it's going to be totally two different spirits in Jacob's trouble. Because the uh, reason why the elect going to be rejoicing because, you know, they know Yahweh Shah is coming, you know. Because once a famine comes, because remember, famine is biblical prophecy too. 
You know, the Lord told us it was going to be a famine before it happened. So that's going to boost the elect faith even more. Because once they see that, then they know for sure Yahweh Shah is coming back. You know, all the prophecy of the Lord will come to pass. But the major prophecy we're waiting on first is the MOTB to be, to be made mandated throughout, throughout America and throughout the whole world. You know, which is the sea hit, man, according to... Uh, the implantable device that will go on either hands or your forehead according to, you know, Revelation 13 16. You see? And these people, they're going to be ashamed because they're going to be lamenting, they're going to be mourning, they're going to be wanting things to go back to normal, how it was before the famine came, before Jacob's trouble came, but they're going to be through. But the elect, they're going to be well taken care of man, and nourished. You see? Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for saw of heart. And shall have for vexation a spirit. That's right, man. So the elect, they're gonna be they gonna be preserved, man. You know. And we read Second Peter two and nine. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. Yeah, so the the that's uh, the Lord's gonna be delivering the, the godly which are the elect out of temptations and Jacob's trouble. You know, from the hour of temptation, which is the M O T B, you know, that's going you know, be made mandated throughout the whole world. The Lord gonna put a heavy spirit on his elect uh, not to take that, you know. But the world, they gonna take it and they still gonna starve, you know. It says, and to preserve the unjust, which is the wicked, until the day of judgment to be punished, right? So the Lord can preserve wicked, wicked doers too, you know. So, you know, the Lord can preserve the the Lord can the Lord balance with the Lord. The Lord can reserve preserve the righteous for salvation, but the Lord can also preserve the wicked for destruction. You know, so you know the Lord is, is righteous in all His ways, man. There's no flaws with the Lord. The Lord is perfect, omnipotent, man. So the Lord gonna take care of His elect. And I just read Psalms thirty one and eight. I mean twenty three again. This is, oh, love the Lord, Yahweh, all you saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. That's right, man. So the Lord is going to preserve the faithful and have them endure all, all through Jacob's trouble. And they're going to be delivered. But the proud doers, they're going to, the Lord is going to reward them with destruction. Have them die of famine, of uh, getting killed in race wars and, and concentration camps, human camps. You know, get you know, getting mauled by beasts. You know, so the the Lord gonna take these proud doers out, these wicked people out, man. They gonna deliver His righteous. So, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I just wanna make a quick lesson on that. Uh, Lord willing, I will zedify. And uh, till next time, shalom.